morning. I'm Nicole Haskins. I'm your your uh, your game day uh, announcer today, I guess, but the monster taming expert here at Paymentus. And we're just going to take an opportunity to have a little fun, create a little levity around what is actually a pretty serious problem, which is uh, solving and taming your billing and payment monsters. And in this case, we we certainly wanted to honor that we've got Super Bowl around the corner and coming off of playoffs from this past weekend where we were really happy to hear that the Bills were in the final playoffs, as we're always wanting our, our Billers to win out and certainly beat down those payment monsters. So getting started, uh, what I thought we would do is just go through what you know who's in that lineup and uh, for the Monsters team. Um, we certainly are going to talk about what are the six most common billing and payment problems that plague a lot of Billers today. Um, and whether you're in government or utility or healthcare or in a B2B mode and you're working to handle bills and e-billing and payments with consumers or citizens, uh, these, are, these are really very real problems. But again, in the spirit of uh, 2021 and moving forward into um, hopefully lighter and, and happier seasons, what we wanted to do is, again, create a little bit of levity around a very serious issue to make sure we can talk about what's causing fumbles in your billing and payment solutions and how to solve those. So some of the most common uh, items or problems that we hear as, as we are engaged with billers throughout the nation are that they have low adoption of self-service channels, they have inefficient or legacy billing or payment systems that's preventing them from move forward into a billing and payment solution that might meet their needs. They struggle a lot with uh, poor customer service experiences over the web or even over the phone, and they don't they aren't getting back great satisfaction surveys of those payment experiences. Of course, one of the big ones is security of customer information, constantly having to stay on top of NACHA or PCI compliance regulations. And they have complicated reporting processes. If they wanted to track down a payment or a problem, or certainly try to figure out what, uh, where their payments are coming from, or their chargebacks or returns, or the reconciliation, that it's a very complicated process. And the last problem, which we'll talk about that is very common, is there can be a lot of reluctance to change. There's a lot of perceptions that these are very difficult systems to install. Um, you know, you have to upgrade your billing solutions. It's it's a year-long project. There's just a lot of reluctance to change this out because it can feel and seem so complicated. So we know that these monsters uh, exist for every biller in every vertical out there. Uh, but obviously, our goal is to arm you and, and help in any way we can to make sure that they're stopped or sacked or tackled or contained. So let's get started and just look at uh, where we have in today's starting lineup our monsters. And we're going to start actually with Brock. Brock is, uh, we call him the blockhead. And, and, and you would think that that's a good term to use in football. But ultimately, what he really is, is he's creating clunky payment experiences that create roadblocks for your customers. So examples of these um, uh, we're going to talk about, but just to give you a little bit of insight about Brock, you know, he's he's he his goal is to make it cumbersome. His goal is to scare away customers from using self-service. And we've all been through these payment experiences where we're online or over the phone, and you just feel like you can't get to the next step. You can't get to the final piece where you can hang up or close out that window on the web and move on about your day because you're asked to do so many features and enter so much information when you're just there to make a payment. So again, Brock lives in Biller City, constantly creating roadblocks. He's also one of the MVPs on the Biller football team, but he's he's uh, definitely been charged with roughing the passer a bit, and he's certainly making it difficult on customers and consumers who are just trying to simply interact with their bill itself. But another small side that we want to talk about uh, with Brock uh, that has a big impact on billers is, is the types of consumers that he's affecting. Uh, as you guys know, as billers that are trying to serve as many customers and citizens as possible, uh, you have generations that you're serving. And so when we talk about what is blocking people from making payments seamlessly or frictionlessly, a lot of times it comes down to what generation are they in? What channels of technology do they use? 
what uh, components or what pieces are they stuck on can sometimes be related to how they grew up and what devices that they're actually utilizing. And a lot of times we focus on maybe the generations that are uh, actually, the parents of the millennial generation, the baby boomers, thinking that they may not have adopted technology uh, as, as much as they should. But that's actually not true. The baby boomers, which is the second largest generation, and the millennial generation, which is the first largest, um, they are digital natives. And mainly because of the fact that they uh, their children were using digital platforms and digital payments before anyone else, and that caused the parents to have to interact with that world as well. But we're going to focus a little bit on the millennial generation today, which is that largest generation, and where are they feeling blocked? And you can imagine with 20% of them never having written a check, most of them uh, are using other forms of payment than even a traditional credit card, and they make up 75% of the workforce, that as these customers and consumers and citizens are trying to pay utility bills or their uh, patient bill or their mortgage, that they're struggling with sometimes traditional methods of payment and also the checkout process that could be cumbersome. So one of the things we do to counteract Brock is we say, okay, we want to make sure that we put in place tools that not only meet traditional payment methods needs, such as ACHs and credit cards, but also the more modern generational needs, such as adding digital wallets, like PayPal and Venmo and PayPal credit and Amazon pay. So that not only do they get the, the payment type that they're looking to use and that they use in their everyday life, that so they can, again, check out or complete their user experience quickly, but they can also do it with less keystrokes using features like OneTouch that auto fills in all the information and also makes them feel like they're using a way of payment that they're used to in their traditional lives. So Brock can have a big impact, but one of the ways to certainly um, put him on those sidelines is to say, okay, I'm going to look at my user experience, see where I have uh, blocked it along the way or made it difficult when there are tools out there that could make it easier for the end user, such as you, use, using digital wallets, using saved payment methods, and using features like OneTouch. So recap, Brock's fumbles, clunky payment experiences, disorderly payment experiences, um, and how to tackle those is just to think about what are some modern payment methods that reduce the end user's time in actually getting to the payment components? Who are we actually serving? And it's probably all generations. And what are the payment methods that they use? And obviously, finding a vendor that can certainly work with these different payment methods that definitely reduce the cumbersome checkout process. So here's one of my favorite players. This is Argus. And Argus, um, we call him the ungainly. But he, what he really represents is one of the most understated but serious billing issues that come up with billers today. And what I mean by that is a lot of times, as you guys know, in your organizations, you're struggling with, I've got a billing system, I have bill print vendors, I have um, you know, e-billing platforms, I have gateway solutions, I have payment processors, I have lockbox providers, and you have to report and reconcile on all of that. You have to make sure they all play nice together, they work cohesively. And so a lot of times that can make you a little cross-eyed. It can make you having to look at lots of different silos out there, lots of different uh, landscapes that you have to kind of bring together in these payment silos in order to um, have a cohesive solution for your end user, but also to, to help with reducing that nightmare, you know, for your back office staff and IT teams. So Argus really represents what many billers struggles, struggles with, with, which is between 10 and 15 different vendors in order to just have an e-billing and e-payment system that works best for the end user. So we'll take a look at where he lives. He loves to live in IT and certainly in the reporting and financial aspects of billers, um, kind of wreaking havoc along the way and saying, you know, I, I know you need to go look at how many IVR payments you had and then check the gateway and then troubleshoot with this vendor if there's a problem. And so we know his fumbles are, as I mentioned, managing lots of vendor relationships and complicated reporting. Um, but how to tackle that is to say, look, my end users need real-time data. We need to have 
a, a integrated solution, a holistic solution. We need to have things like single reconciliation solutions. And so one of the ways to tame and contain Argus is to say, okay, I can't have a solution that has a, a e-bill vendor here and a text vendor there and a chatbot vendor here and different PayPal um, components with different vendors and gateways. And these all hook to maybe different databases. I need something a bit more holistic. So this is where Paymentus comes in and we said, just like we want to simplify the front end for the end user to have a nice frictionless environment to make a payment or to get information about their bill in. We also want to do that on the back office side. We want to say, okay, in the back office side, we want to go into an agent dashboard that has all the information we need in, in a single reconciliation system. So whether those payments were made in person, through a lockbox and cash, at remote locations like Walmart, through auto pay, you have one place to go within the office um, and the back office solutions for your staff to be able to say, this is this is our financial picture. This is where I can actually find those payments or I can complete a reporting or reconciliation solution. And so we provide a single repository for your posting reports and your deposits and anything that you need in order to complete your end-to-end -end, uh, process on the back office as you put in place billing systems. And so what that looks like is really an improved tool set for tracking payments. It looks like, again, that cohesive holistic view into seeing the transactions coming through your system today, where you can go in and view them in more detail or cancel or refund them or just watch as they continue to post so that you're being able to see that in real time uh, as those payments are being made. And so that takes a very complicated environment that uh, Argus thrives in and really moves it into a simplistic solution uh, that says, okay, yes, we're going to have one payment processing solution. We're going to have one provider for the channels, and we can integrate that into the many different databases we might have. So Ingrid, we're going to talk about for a few minutes. Uh, she's, she's an interesting family member or team member of, of the Monsters. You know, a lot of times um, people don't like to talk about Ingrid a ton. She's she's very cumbersome, and 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 what she's really representing in many ways is is inertia. So we like to bring up uh, Ingrid and talk about her a little bit because we we like our billers to understand that even if you're running on a very old legacy billing system, you can modernize. You can provide the the front end solutions that your customers will enjoy. Um, you can get rid of layers of ice and, and you know, her inability to change or move that can kind of bog down uh, the entire team, the entire group. Uh, obviously, if you have a billing system that you can't get access to or real-time access or you can't get data out or you're hindered because your e-bills are not provided in PDFs, and there's a million examples that we could use, um, you feel stuck and your staff feel stuck, but you, you certainly don't have to feel stuck or frozen in time um, because the payment landscape is always moving forward. There's always uh, a, a new feature, a new function, a new tool, and, and you want to be able to take advantage of those as quickly as possible so that you can keep up with what your customers are doing um, in lots of other areas, in the retail spaces, in their public sector spaces, in their healthcare spaces. So some of her fumbles are outdated payment systems that, you know, you just maybe don't have time to change. But with the simple change into a modern system, um, you might find that actually saves you more time than the time you would put into replacing it. Um, they're struggling with legacy billing solutions that they think maybe nobody can work with, uh, where that's, that's worth an exploration just so that you can see the positive impacts that a new front end can have. Um, and then, you know, a lot of times billers are struggling with just internal stakeholders that they just don't want to change or, or it's good enough. Uh, but again, this is one of those markets and one of those services that you all offer as billers that are always changing. It's always changing, especially with the past 12 months. We're always seeing uh, what are new ways for people to pay? How do we serve our underbanked or our cash preferred? How do we handle that our offices are closed? And how do we work with digital wallets, which have now surpassed credit card usage? So we have to always be changing in order to stay on top of customer satisfaction and also drive adoption. 
So uh, a couple of the examples of if you were to look at uh, moving forward with a new billing system, some of the enhancements that are available out there are things like chatbot, meaning the ability to use a conversational chatbot on your portal so that you can alleviate staff, live staff, from having to interact with uh, customers or citizens, or to help with those millennial generations that are actually trying to replace a lot of human-to-human -human interactions themselves. So chatbot has really become a very, very uh, popular tool on a lot of retail sites, and it's definitely making an impact in the billing world. And so having a PCI compliant automated machine learning and artificial intelligence solutions that citizens and customers can just come in and simply enter an account number or ask it a question, make a payment, can save thousands of calls and inquiries to really what is an already exhausted customer service teams during this time. But in order to get to something like Chatbot, you have to be willing to change. You have to be willing to modernize. And so that's why we like to talk about Ingrid a little bit. So a couple of Ingrid's friends still left on the team that we certainly should highlight um, is Mort. Uh, he's traditionally extremely sluggish and, and as you can see, carries quite a, a spiny shell on his back. He's, he's known for some un, unnecessary roughness on the field and, and really we, we like Mort to represent that heavy weighed down integration process that slows down implementations at times. Um, and, and when things aren't integrated well, when there's not real-time data, when there's not real-time payment posting or, or cash flow that's occurring, um, that slowness is really felt by not only you and your staff, but also your customers. It kind of slimes everything. And he has that impact uh, from top down in the fact that um, we all know that we want instant gratification, and so we want to see that our payment posted immediately. You know, you're, you as billers are looking to how to get our money faster, how to get it in the door. You don't want delays. You don't want three to five days till you get your funding. If someone pays cash at Walmart, you want that immediately. And But Mort can sometimes stand in the way because, again, not having a holistic provider or solution allows these billing and payment monsters to continue to impact you. So Mort's fumbles are outdated data exchanges and sluggish systems, and of course he and he and uh, Ingrid are pretty good friends. And so between inability to change or just lack of innovation, uh, they hang out a lot together. But the way to tackle him is to say, yes, I want to look at more ways to get faster in getting information to our customers, to get data faster, and then also to get our funding and our money faster. And so how do we do that? Well, we work with someone that handles real-time payments and real-time integrations themselves. Another way that Mort can uh, be an impact is he can certainly hinder then you wanting to excel and move forward in new ways to pay. So a lot of people have uh, um, started to invoke pay by text, and, and all of our billers, of course, are utilizing that. But uh, you'll notice that when you do pay by text, you're you're not asking someone to type in a credit card. It's reminding them that there is a bill due. Um, so if they have a hospital bill due, you can let them know that their bill is due on their mobile device, and then they can just type the word back pay, especially if they're a recurring user. We also use this to notify people. Um, and so this is a way that using our technology and removing more, slowing things down, is that we're notifying them faster. They're not waiting for a bill in the mail. They're not checking their email uh, for a monthly delivery. They are getting it right there on their device that they're holding, you know, 18 hours out of the day. And so they can immediately then react, which means that when they react and if you have real time supported, you get your money immediately. And so that's, that's a very critical component to helping billers manage uh, their financial landscape internally is how can we get money in faster? How can we do it in the safest way possible? And in order to do those things, you have to really have tools that make customers feel um, that they're getting that information as quick as possible, but they can interact with it too in, in a quick way. If you just send someone a text message, they read the text message. If you don't give them a way to do something immediately, they'll forget about it. They'll move on to the next text message or the next item that pops up on their phone. So giving them a way to immediately send back information to is, is helpful. So 
Stinger is um, our second to last monster today. Um, and he really represents a very, very serious issue for a lot of billers, and that is compliance. So, you know, all billers that take credit cards and take ACH or e-checks, they're certainly at risk for data breaches and security breaches that can leave them in a very difficult position. And as you can see, you know, obviously, he has um, a lot of ways to, to slip and, and, and get into crevices that you never knew existed. And really, what we want to just make sure that everyone's aware of is that, is that when you look for billing and payment providers, this should actually be one of your number one concerns, is that Stinger is around every corner. He can be in IT. He can be hanging out, um, you know, listening in the call queues for credit card numbers. There's a lot of compliance issues that go on in billers today. And, and to keep up with that is very, very difficult. All the PCI regulations change consistently. NACHA has just rolled out brand new regulations that uh, need to be complied with by the end of March. And so having also a hosted third-party vendor to help you through these pieces and offload the burden of PCI compliance is critical. Um, he's not very good at stiff arming on the field for sure, uh, but he's great at trying to hide in plain sight even many times. So how do you tackle him? You, you use hosted solutions. You offload the PCI compliance and the NACHA compliance. You make sure that you have proven providers that would have contractual protection, but also can really just take this out of your viewpoint. You don't need to deal with Stinger, um, especially in a modern payment processing solution, because you want to 100% try to get that off your plate so that if something ever happens, it's not on the biller's desk to deal with. So the last monster for today and um, um, is Kronkis, and we call him the misfit. And really, he's the definition of a personal foul when it comes to, to football. Uh, just looking at him, it, you're really showing that he has a poor and unattractive user experience, and he creates problems constantly with adoption and customer satisfaction. And you heard me mention that all these monsters kind of are in the same family and, and on the same team, and that's really true. They all play together. They all hang out together. And so when we talk about kind of wrapping up the thoughts around what are the six, you know, most difficult billing and payment problems to solve and by using companies like Paymentus to do so, this is one of those ones that a lot of times gets overlooked is that at the end of the day, even if you modernized everything, you're all real time, you've offloaded your, your security concerns by using hosted and SaaS based solutions, unless you have a system that customers will want to come back to again and again, that's had the user interface interfaces thought about, that really says, okay, they're trying to make this as easy as possible for me to complete a payment or get billing and payment information so that I will complete a payment or be in the know about payments and bills uh, is critical. And a lot of times, you know, you see things like PIN numbers or multiple windows opening or there's, uh, you know, a 17-digit account number, and then you have to enter your billing address on top of that. You know, lots of just little items that as companies are out there and sites are out there that are trying to do the previous five monsters we talked about, a lot of times that can cause issues in the user experience. So I like to bring up Crunkus at the very last part just because it's the thing that is the most uh, you know, physical in front of your customers that's coming to your website every single day, seeing those bills in, in their mailbox or on their text to pay or on their phones or emails. And they want to be able to have this pleasant experience. Even though we all know paying bills isn't a pleasant experience many times, you have to make it as pleasant as possible so they will use the automation. They will use those secured services that you've provided. They will interact um, with a frictionless system that has no roadblocks. And so uh, I like this little representation of Crunkus showing that, uh, you know, if you build it, they will come to your web. And if they build it, they'll come to your IVR to make payments. But it has to be pleasing. It has to be something that they want to come back and use again so that you continue to see those adoption rates increase. Um, in the last 12 months, mainly due to necessity, everyone has seen their adoption increase in e-commerce. But 
we don't feel that that is going to decline now. Once people got used to paying bills and accessing information through the channels uh, that, that are provided, they'll stay using those automated channels. But they're not going to maybe like it. So the other side of this is you might get the adoption you need, but then you have to still have satisfied customers along the way. So how to tackle Crunkus? You know, you're continually evolving and innovating so that you do keep up with the ever-changing landscape. You offer as many ways to pay as possible, and you're consistently making sure that you do meet your demographics needs, like we talked about with Brock, uh, but also that you're making your billing and payment solution as attractive and user-friendly as possible, too, so that they want to come back again and again. So our winning game plan for your customers and your agency, um, just as a quick recap of our six billion payment monsters, is, is really to uh, find those quick, convenient ways to pay, like PayPal, like Amazon Pay, like Venmo. Um, make sure you, you certainly uh, think about that user experience and your adoption. Find vendors that are hosted and modern and can do real-time data exchanges so that your back office isn't dealing with a multi-eyed, uh, you know, Argus. And then really, obviously, is finding the right vendor that can advance your current solution. Vendors that are moving forward, like Paymentus, into um, remote location payments so that people can make payments at Walmart, are supporting all the digital wallets, like PayPal, Apple, Google, have chatbots and voice assistants with Amazon, Alexa, and they're watching where the customers are going. They're saying, okay, we can't always wait for the customer to come to us um, and worry about just those $6 billion in payment monsters there. We also have to figure out a way of how we're going to go to where they're going today. And so you've probably noticed um, certainly that I've brought up remote location payments, making payments with Walmart at Walmart, making payments with digitized cash with PayPal. And that's just another way to say, I want our customers to come to our sites and our IVR systems and our text to pays, but I also want to be able to give the demographics that need notifications and need to also go to other locations to make payment service as well. And so with our team, here's a recap of our team together. Um, uh, we don't feel that they're going to win the game against the billers in any way, especially with the help of Paymentus and vendors that really understand how to solve and, and contain these billing and payment monsters. But that's really our goal as a company is to say, look, we know these are problems out there. It's why we exist as a firm. It's why we have thousands of billers that migrate to us and say, I need some help containing them. You'll never banish them all the time as it's an ever-evolving market, but we're certainly here to help you as much as possible uh, tackle them together. So I know that was a little bit fast and furious. I wanted to be really respectful of everybody's time. I really appreciate you all letting us have a little fun uh, during football season and towards the end of football season. We could ask you to you know, certainly take the quiz to see which is your biggest billing payment monster, and uh, certainly would love for you to start a conversation with a monster taming expert to see how we could help. Thanks, everyone, and, and have a great day. And any chat or questions that have come in, we will certainly answer and send back out to the group.